Hello, today we're going to look at our favorite Hemlock Knots website, the Monogamy versus Polygamy Source Quotes page. This is very interesting. We have some specific information we like to get to, but first, let's quickly go over contemporary, most credible, written or spoken within the time frame of the events being discussed, early recollections, less credible, recorded months or within a few years after the event. And of course, we have late recollections least credible recorded several years or even decades after the event proximity very important firsthand most credible author can be reasonably assumed to have firsthand knowledge of the described events and then of course secondhand less credible so forth and so on verbatim verbal percentage of statement claimed as verbatim conversational memory lengthy verbatim recollection should be received with skepticism however small phrases and simpler sentences can sometimes be recollected accurately as the exception not the norm all right let's get into it we've got some great stuff here on the polygamy side joseph smith jr four month recollection second hand no original copy someone else's handwriting not good okay what do we got on the four not practicing polygamy side corms of the 70s contemporary first hand joseph smith jr contemporary first hand 96 percent verbatim written joseph smith jr contemporary first hand oh my goodness you'll find on this page that we have all the contemporary first hand joseph smith juniors on the four polygamy side are very sus. They're Joseph Smith Jr. 1842 20 plus month recollection pro polygamy side that he actually practiced it. Joseph Smith 70 year recollection on the pro polygamy that he'd never practiced it. We have countless contemporary first hand Joseph Smith Jr. Hiram Smith Joseph Smith Jr. contemporary first hand Another Joseph Smith Jr. contemporary firsthand affidavit Joseph Smith Jr. We want to get down to some important evidence we want to look at in this video. If you scroll on the pro polygamy side that he practiced it, you won't find any contemporary firsthand evidence like you do that he never practiced it. Well, let's get down to Joseph Smith Jr. 1843 August 5th. This date, very important. Contemporary, firsthand, dictated, described, altered 11 months later after Joseph's death. Editor's note, this excerpt comes from an untitled journal of 278 manuscript pages in the handwriting of Willard Richards, dated August 5th, 1843 in Nauvoo. This is where they change his journal. This is where it gets really shady and deceitful. This is Joseph Smith's original journal. He says he walked up and down the street with scribe and gave instructions to try those who are pra preaching, teaching, practicing the doctrine of plurality of wives. On this law, Joseph forbids it and the practice thereof. No man shall have but one wife. That's it. That's all he wrote. However, we have history draft, rewritten, edited. The history draft contains mark up and notes on the page, including phrase to be revised in the margin. Several, this is in the Joseph Smith papers. You can check it out. Get on the site and find this evidence for yourself. The amount of space at the end of the entry, which were filled in with additional details, written in a different handwriting, walked up and down the street with scribe and gave instructions to try those persons who were preaching, teaching, or practicing the doctrine of plurality of wives. And here's what's crossed out. On this law, Joseph forbids it in the practice thereof. Uh-oh. For, according to the law, I hold the keys of this power in the last days, for there is never but one on earth at a time on whom the powers and its keys are conferred. And I have constantly said, no man shall have but one wife at a time, unless the Lord directs otherwise. Okay, that changes the meaning slightly, actually quite a bit. Editors note, this is, then we have the final draft. They finally decide what they're going to change his original words to. Editor's note, the final draft keeps in edits and revisions that were added after Joseph Smith's death and under Brigham Young's leadership, which were never recorded by the original scribe on the date of August 5th, 1843. The original history of the church volume records it as official church history uh, with no mention of the edits. Walked up and down the street with scribe and gave instructions to try those persons who are preaching, teaching, or practicing the doctrine of plurality of wives. For according to the law, I hold the keys of this power in the last days, for there is never but one on earth at a time whom the power and his keys are conferred. And I have said constantly, no man 
shall have but one wife at a time unless the Lord directs otherwise. Why the need to change Joseph Smith's journal so drastically? Well, obviously, if you look at the actual testimony of Joseph Smith that we have comparatively to those who claim that he practiced polygamy almost every single contemporary first-hand affidavit, diary, journal, you name it, we have it from Joseph Smith claiming he didn't practice polygamy. It is clear. It is concise. It's on this wonderful website that these guys have put this work into. I please go check it out. There's something else we have to check out. Here we have a very important incident that happened in church history you'll never hear about unless you hang out with the Hemlock Knots boys and some of their cohorts. All right, here we have Hiram Smith, contemporary first-hand affidavit. This is very important. He deals with John C. Bennett and his spiritual wifery business that's been going on behind Joseph and Hiram's back that they had to fight against all the time that you never hear about. He says, having been made acquainted with some of the conduct of John C. Bennett, which was given in testimony under oath before Alderman G.W. Harris by several females who testified that John C. Bennett endeavored to seduce them and accomplished his designs by saying, and it was right that it was one of the mysteries of God which was to be revealed when the people was strong enough in the faith to bear such mysteries. This is that spiritual wifery craziness. That it was perfectly right to have illicit intercourse with females providing no one knew it but themselves, vehemently trying them from day to day to yield to his passions, John C. Bennett's passions, bringing witnesses of his own clan to testify that there was such revelation and such commandments that it was from God, also stating that he would be responsible for their sins if there was any, and that he would give them medicine to produce abortions providing they should become pregnant. One of these witnesses, a married woman that he attended upon in his professional capacity while she was sick stated that he made proposals to her on a similar nature. So he gets in trouble, Hiram's got him. This is that spiritual wifery stuff saying, oh yeah, you know, it's all good. I've got revelations. God said it was okay. You know, the usual evil stuff. So what happens when he gets caught? Who does he call? Who's his two bros that he calls? Let's scroll down. He says, on becoming acquainted with these facts, I was determined to prosecute him and bring him to justice. Some person knowing my determination, having informed him of it, he sent to me, William Law and Brigham Young. Wow, what do you know? To request an interview with me to see if there could not be a reconciliation made. I told them I thought there could not be, his crimes were too heinous. Let's scroll down, Let's, gotta check this out. He said, Brother Joseph, I am guilty. This is John C. Bennett, he finally gets a hold of Brother Joseph. He says, I acknowledge it and I beg of you not to expose me, it will ruin me. Joseph replied, Doctor, why are you using my name to carry out your hellish wickedness? Have I ever taught you that fornication and adultery was right or polygamy or any such practices? He said, you never did. Did I ever teach you anything that was not virtuous, that was iniquitous, either in public or private? He said, you never did. Did you ever know anything unvirtuous or unrighteous in my conduct or actions at any time, either in public or in private? He said, I did not. John C. Bennett, he gets this contemporary first-hand affidavit from him. He says, State of Illinois, City of Nauvoo, personally appeared before me, Daniel H. Wells, an alderman of city, said City of Nauvoo, John C. Bennett, who was being duly sworn according to law, disposeth and saith that he never was taught anything in the least contrary to the strictest principles of the gospel or of virtue or of the laws of God or man under any occasion, either directly or indirectly, in word or deed. This is important because people are always saying, Joseph taught me in private. Look at the other side of the page. All 70 year recollection, Joseph Smith, Brigham and a few others that say, oh yeah, he taught me in secret all the time. Many times he says, any strong doctrines I taught you in both private and public, any strong doctrines I've taught in private as well as public. There you have it, folks. Check it out. It is all there. This is great knowledge. We have all the contemporary first-hand affidavits on the side that Joseph Smith did not practice polygamy. Have a great day, folks.